welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our very last workshop today. I think that is a very good one, uh, seeming looking to, to your excited faces, all fresh, all new, all everyone is excited to really just see this awesome speaker. As you hear many times this day, of course, Startup World is, of course, often said with the words awesome. You can cuddle, you can, yeah, just really move and get anything in there on the benches. So if you haven't found that. No. So, last but not least, we have one final workshop for you with the topic of social media and social hacks, you could say, for what could you do for 10 baby steps in social media. Who of you is on social media? Oh, I should ask the other way around, that's fun. Who's not on social media? Hello, guys, what are you using? <laughs> social offline networks? <laughs> How does that work? <laughs> Is that fun? How do you stalk people? I don't know. What do you do? <laughs> On the back? Oh, okay, okay. Old print. Okay, welcome. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do this on a digital level. Um, harnessing the power of marketing. So I bet you heard those words before. 10 baby steps into social media presented by Jana. You can ask her last name. <laughs> uh, from Yay Starter. And she is going to give you really an insight. And she also pointed out in her little short um, extract that she will give you five key points you will take away. So if you haven't noted down something yet, this is your chance to go home with a note and go like, I took something away today. Okay? So have fun and give a very warm applause for our last speaker today here on stage. Welcome, Jana. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I hope you don't mind I will be standing because I'm really falling asleep if I sit down. <laughs> it's not because of you, it's, it's just me. And first of all, let me just correct the topic. I know I've been given the topic which was 10 baby steps in social media, but I thought to myself when preparing this presentation, Look, these are not baby steps, these are proper steps, and they will take you where you want to be. So, harnessing the power of marketing 10 steps to social media success. To begin with, um, I know you've been asked who's on social media, and pretty much it's everyone these days, unless you're hiding from someone. Um, but apart from that, tell me, how many of you get excited by social media? <laughs> okay, yeah, I think I'll find the door. Um, anyway, um, fine, I'll try to convince those who probably are less excited than I am and these lovely people in the row where I was sitting before listening to the previous presentation, so I think we bonded and that's why they decided to support me. Um, <laughs> tell me who is not excited by social media, at least in terms of marketing on social media. Okay, so I guess the rest are just undecided. <laughs> Abstaining to vote, fine. Um, again, I, I just hope I will swing you to our side um, after this presentation. Just to begin with, uh, who we are, what we do, why I'm here. Oh, first of all, Ye Starter is the marketing agency that I started a couple of years ago, and with one single clear mission to help startups to succeed and it's really in the core of what we're doing i'm the founder we're based in london and we work in majority of cases with startups and the idea came to me when i was still in my corporate job i was doing marketing in the agencies i was doing marketing for big brands that everyone knows and i started talking to people in startups and had many friends at the time starting something for themselves and I realized that these guys do not necessarily have access to the best expertise at least in marketing I can help them maybe somewhere else I can't but this is where I can help so I decided let me try and do that let me help them so to me in order to decide whether I want to work with a personal company most importantly I just need to see that they want to grow that they are not settling for the status quo if I see this growth ambition, I want to be with them. So the companies that I personally worked with, and I'm very sorry for this small screen, you can't properly see it, but I just put some bloggers on there, and yes, there were Procter and Gamble's and Canons of this world, and I was working on fantastic things for them. But these are the companies who have big budgets, they have so much leverage, they have such a big share of voice, 
it's exciting to be working with them, but in fact, are you really challenging yourself when you're working with big budgets and the brands that everyone knows anyway? In the second row, there are some, some logos of the startups that I started working with more recently, and even if you saw the screen, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't know this, who these companies are. They, they are predominantly technology startups, even though I also have clients in, in sport apparel, and this is one of the most exciting clients, perhaps, that um, I worked with uh, in my startup capacity. But there is one common trait between all of them. They are eager to grow. They are eager to succeed. And it's an absolute pleasure working with startups. So the reason we are all here, we are going to talk about startup marketing and how it is different from the usual marketing for other companies. Just to begin with, taking a step back from social media, what is the difference between traditional marketing and startup marketing? So with traditional approach, if you're a company and you have budgets, you go and hire a marketing manager, you go and hire an agency, you work with them, if everything goes well, you reap the rewards. So you have more sales, you have more customers, everything is great. If something is not so great, you just go and fire this marketing manager, fire this agency, replace them, repeat. If you're a startup, the margin that you have for error is tiny. You really, really don't have an ability to make failures in what you do in terms of, at least in terms of marketing. The cost of failure is huge and you don't have the massive budget. So when you are a startup thinking about marketing, my advice to you is if you're a founder or a co-founder, go and try a few things for yourself. Learn about them, read, go online, talk to people, but really try to take these nuggets and go away and implement them. This will give you in the future the ability to have this critical eye when it comes to marketing implementation that someone else is doing on your behalf. And it will help you guide through all this marketing gibberish that every marketing expert will be kind of throwing at you. So go and try things. Then once you are at that stage when you're comfortable with bringing marketing specialists on board, do bring someone, but make sure that they really understand what is startup marketing about. If they, they might have fantastic experience in the outside world <coughs> doing you know, hugely successful marketing for huge companies, but is it a relevant skill set? My experience tells me that it's not. And I fought and I learned my hard way in order to get into place when I know what sort of startup marketing uh, is required in order to for these little companies that have huge growth ambitions to succeed and not to waste money on the way. And whatever you do, whoever you bring on board, make sure that you analyze your return on investment every now and then. You do it very, very often. You do it much more often if you're a startup than when you are in a big enterprise. You basically iterate, change things every week. You don't just put a campaign on and let it run and then run and run, and maybe in a week, or a month, or three months time, you come back and say, ah, it didn't really work out, we could have fixed it in the beginning, but we only iterate stuff once in three months, so we didn't. Now, that's not the startup way, let me tell you that. You may decide you need to, at some point, grow your team, your marketing team, in-house, which is great, but what I really urge you to do only do it when there's a real reason behind it, when there is a sustainable workflow coming their way, when you're just simply not coping on your own, when you're not coping with the specialist you brought on board as startup marketing agencies like the company that I had or whoever. But don't grow just for the sake of growing. Don't hire more people in order to demonstrate growth to the outside world. This is a different reason and it's not a valid reason to grow. So, now we're coming to the core of our workshop today. And I thought, let's start with definition of social media marketing. I have to say, I was looking for it online uh, for some time because things that I've seen first, I just didn't like and they didn't cut it for me. Um, 
So what is social media marketing? Does anyone have any ideas? Not looking at the screen, sorry. <laughs> so the guys in the first two rows, yes, you can't answer this question. I want, I want answers from the back. What is social media marketing? Say again? You just read the screen. <laughs> Indeed, I really envy you. But anyway, for those who can't read from a distance, <laughs> social media marketing is really about the use of social media channels and websites to market companies' products. And it is a unique possibility for companies to reach potential customers and to engage with them, to engage with existing customers as well. And the next question you, you probably ask yourself, do I need social media marketing? And if you're a founder or a co-founder of a startup, I will tell you that's the wrong question to be asking yourself. Yep. So the right question to ask yourself, how shall I use it? How shall I use social media marketing? And our 10 step program will help. Um, so we will get started in a couple of minutes. If you're an investor, asking yourself this question, what's the value of the social media marketing? And why is it worth investing? Would be the right question. I can tell you a million reasons why it's worth it, but perhaps the most valid ones are that it's cheap and cheerful, really, really cheap and cheerful if you compare it to the traditional media. And it's easy to scale up and down. You can do it in your spare time. You can do it on a tablet, you can do it on a mobile phone, you can do it at night, during the day, whenever you want. You put campaigns up, you pause them, you reshuffle them, you put them up again. It also gets your results that are easy to analyze. And as all marketers know, it is hard to analyze the return investment. At least it used to be hard before these digital channels came in. And social media, I can say, they are leading the way, making it easy to analyze the results and therefore the, the return on investment. And that's why so many marketers actually love the digital channels. Because how easy it is to tell how many people watched your ad. Now, of course, there are some ads on TV. There are some metrics, there are some devices that measure it, and with the access to digital TV, it becomes a little bit easier, but it's not as accurate and probably will never be accurate until some new revolutionary technology is introduced to tell how many people saw your advertisement on TV and how attentive they were. Whereas when I run a campaign on Facebook, I always know how many people actually reacted to it, how they reacted, did they like it, did they not like it, did they go on the website, how much time spent on the website, did they convert, did they not convert. I can tell you what was my customer uh, acquisition price really easily, which is completely not possible or partially not possible with print or TV. So getting to the meat of our workshop and looking at the 10 steps to social media success. Step number one, it's really simple. Learn from the best. Just think about the brand, or a number of brands. I'm sure you always have, you all have these brands that you love, like the Apples, the Cokes, the, I don't know, Mercedes of this world. And go and check the social media channels. Go and check what they do on Facebook. Go and check what they do on Instagram, on Twitter, on Snapchat. Um, I guarantee you, these big brands will be pretty much everywhere. See what they do, how they engage with the public, how they interact, what they post, how often they post. That will be a, perhaps the first step ever. Then think about your competitors, not just any competitors, think about your successful competitors. And hopefully you're one of these companies that doesn't say, oh, I don't have any competitors whatsoever, I'm so unique. Um, in that case, be creative in your thinking. Think who is the closest one to you. You might have a unique product, but there will be products in the marketplace that serve more or less the same need that your product is aspiring to serve. So go on to the social media channels that your competitors are managing successfully and see what they do, see how often they do it, think for yourself whether you like it or not, just try to be unbiased 
and look at it from the perspective of a consumer. And also try to see for these little things that what you think they're not doing right, or where you think you might come in and actually serve this customer base better. Are they responsive to messages if it's Facebook? Are they actually addressing the critique, which is one of major pitfalls of brands, not being able to address critique at all, or not being able to address it effectively? Are they really relevant? Is the messaging great? You need to look for this out there, and the best, the best way to learn is actually to learn from the real life situations. And also listen, be a, an active listener always. Listen to what people say about your competitors' brands. How many of you have seen this picture? And it's a picture that Oreo Cookie put on the Twitter page a number of years ago. It's not as new anymore, but it's still probably one of my most favorite examples of viral social media marketing. Does anyone know this picture? Yes. Yeah? So what, do you, can, I, can you tell us where it's from? What's the story behind it? I think it was during a power blackout during the Super Bowl, and everything went dark, and they reacted really quickly with this uh, image. Absolutely, absolutely right. So just to recap um, what the gentleman was saying, um, Aurea jumped on the opportunity when there was a blackout, a power cut, in the United States during a Super Bowl, mm. an American football competition, and the whole state went completely pitch dark. And what did they already do? They somehow managed to access Twitter, which is good, considering the power cut, and put up this picture, which says, power out? No problem. You can still dunk in the dark. Dunk is meaning putting your Oreo cookie in your tea or coffee or whatever. How brilliant is that? Why is it brilliant? Because it's relevant. Because it's within the context. And how much do you think it costs Aurea to put this ad up? Any ideas? Nothing. Well, maybe half an hour of designer's time, and even it's best, if it's the best design in the world, it probably costs them, I don't know, 200 bucks with, with the best design in the world, which I don't think it was, because <laughs> no. it perhaps was an intern, which didn't cost anything, or a little bit. <laughs> I don't know, employment rules in the USA, I'm sorry, but the bottom line is it didn't cost them that much. And I'm pretty sure they didn't even promote it on Twitter, so they didn't pay any fees and access in the platform. So literally you can say the cost of this is close to nothing. And how is it relevant to you? It is relevant because if Aurea can do it on a zero cost basis, so you can you you can harness the power of social without paying much for it, or not paying at all. Mm -hmm. Let's carry on with step number two. You can also learn from the common mistakes. So, everyone makes mistakes, and of course the most relevant learning is when you made a mistake, then hopefully learn from it, but to minimize the amount of mistakes that you make, you can first see what other people are not doing great. And I will help you out because it might not be obvious when you're looking at someone else's polished page on whatever social media you're looking at. From my perspective, from my experience working with startups and advising them on social media um, strategy and implementation, what I hear and what are my most favorite or most hated rather um, things that I hear are as follows. Let's be everywhere. Let's be everywhere at once. I want to be on Facebook, I want to be on Snapchat, I want to be on Reddit. I just want to be everywhere. And when I ask them why, the, the best they say because everyone is doing it. But they don't have a reason. So whatever you do, think about why you want to be there in the first place. And I'll talk about it later because it's massively important. Another very common mistake, our stuff is great, let's just flock it there, let's sell it, let's sell it on our Facebook page, let's just make our Facebook page about selling stuff. And there is nothing wrong with selling on Facebook or, or on Instagram or anywhere else, it's what businesses do, they sell, it's fine. However, 
it's not right when you're just opened up, when you're just trying to make your page interesting, when you're trying to engage people and, and reach new audiences. Social media is not about sales in the first place. If you know Mark Zuckerberg's vision for Facebook for years and years and years was to increase engagement. How do you increase engagement if you flock stuff to people? Probably not going to work. And actually, yes, Facebook is introducing a number of changes and he's only been talking about it a week ago. And as a result of these changes, first time in Facebook's history, they are agreeing that engagement levels will go down. It's the first time in Facebook's history and they don't know how it will play out. I personally think the arm was twisted to do that by the US government, but that's another story and I might tell you when I'm off stage. Um, other mistakes that I see quite often include thinking we will be clever, we will be humorous and people will come. Guess what? It's pretty much the same as thinking my product is great, people will buy it anyway. Have you heard this common mistake of the startup founders before? So that's the social media equivalent of that. You might be very clever, you might be very humorous, however, you need to reach people, <coughs> otherwise they're not going to come there on their own. Especially these days when the organic reach on social media is going down. It's been going down for a number of years for platforms like Facebook, and at the moment it is about 2%, which is, which is not great for anyone who's planning to put their hopes up because of the organic reach. But again, I'll talk about it later. Let's just get as many followers as possible. How is that for a pitfall? What's bad about having hundreds of thousands or millions of people liking you? Yes, sir? I guess that low engagement at the end of the day. Low engagement at the end of the day, exactly. How can you be sure that these are actually really normal people that actually love your brand and, and authentically interested in it? You can't. Yes? I think that to me, the relevant audience is interesting. Absolutely. If you don't have relevant interest, uh, interested audience, this, in, uh, this audience will not engage with you. So there is nothing wrong with growing, obviously, but you have to be selective. And my advice to you is to always put quality first over quantity. Because in the end of the day, it's a vanity metric. Likes for likes, it's vanity. And another one, my, one of my favorite terms probably, it's um, let's launch and then decide what we do. No, don't do that, please. Just, just don't. Um, and the counter argument to that that I hear from, from startups is, uh, well, it's, it's better than to have some social media presence than to have none. And again, that's wrong. Well, honestly, imagine you are a business that is doing great. You have your service or product with people are actually buying. And you have your loyal customers as well. You are doing well. And then someone discovers your Twitter page that has two followers and three posts from 2014. How do you think it will look to them? <laughs> would it look like a page of a credible business? No. Do you think they will know that you're a successful company as a result of being on that page? Again, no. So if you have some historical channels that are not working and you don't have any resource or plan on how to make them work, just shut them down. You will reopen when you're ready, but don't have these ghost channels hanging around. <coughs> it will actually harm your brand rather than enhance it. Step number three. And I touched upon it before. But it's a fundamental question. Decide why you want to be on social. What is this core reason for you to be there? <laughs> what is your belief? Why do you think it's important? <clears throat> this will define everything that follows. And it will, it will be much easier for yourselves to answer this, the, the question um, once you answer this fundamental question. The, the, everything else will be kind of falling into places. You'll decide 
whether you're here for popularity, whether you're here for sales, whether you're here for something else. And these are all very relevant purposes. It just, the approach will be different depending on the purpose that actually brings you there. And I encourage you to make your why about bigger things, about bigger, something bigger than sales, something bigger than being the most popular Facebook page of a soup startup in Germany. Uh, make, it, make it something bigger. Make it, if you're a soup startup, for example, make it about feeding the entire nation with the best produce and making people slim and making people healthy and, and happy. Make it about them, not you. And most importantly, don't be like everyone else. Can anyone see this picture? I guess some of you can, nice. some of you can't, but the people in front row, can someone describe what they see, if they understand what they see? Because I'm sorry, it's small. Much smaller than I hoped for. It's people on surfboards. Yeah, exactly, thank you. There are people on surfboards. And what are they doing? They're waiting for a big wave. Mm. They, they are, yeah. they are. Yes. Very true. Yes. Yeah, they are surfers in the ocean, on the lineup. Lineup is the place where you're catching waves. Or at least they think they're on the lineup. There are probably a couple of people who are actually on the lineup. Oh God, this keeps. Yeah, like this. A couple of people in the lineup, and everyone else is God knows where, doing God knows what. <laughs> And they might believe they are, that they are in the lineup doing the right thing, but I've seen this picture so many times in all surf resorts in the world, when you have a bunch of tourists or locals, doesn't matter, completely in the wrong place, completely in the wrong time. Why they're there? Thank you, because everyone is doing it. You know what it's called? It's called the herd instinct. People are herd animals, that's fine. But not when it comes to important decisions. Not when it comes to such an important thing as surfing. When you're actually there to have fun and enjoy yourself. These people are wasting hours of their time. They are sitting on the heads of each other. They're not catching any waves. They are hurting each other. But they're there just because everyone else is there. And that's never mind that every surfing resort or every surfing country in the world has kilometers of beaches kilometers of waves and even maybe like 200 down the line from this place there will be a place when the waves are perfect but no one is there why because no one is there because you can't be as a herd so don't be like them don't do things on social just because everyone else is doing it okay think for yourself That brings me to my next step, which is about your audience. Know your audience. <laughs> what does it mean? Well, of course you need to know in you know, generic marketing terms, what's your audience? What age are they? What's the gender? Where do they live? What do they do? What they don't like to do? All this is basics. You must know it. As a business founder, you just need to know it by heart. And if I wake you up in the middle of the night, you should answer this question very easily. But it's going one step further than that. You need to answer the question, why would they care? <coughs> if you can really answer this question, why would they care about your product, about your service, or about your company, that's when you know your audience. And it's really hard sitting somewhere in a startup incubator, or you know, at home, or in a cafe, wherever you work, it's very hard to know your audience that intimately. So don't be shy. Go and talk to people who you think is your audience. <coughs> Ask them. Ask them why would they care about what you do? Why would they care about what you put on social media? You might hear some great things or you might hear something that will make you uncomfortable. It can happen. But you want to know this. You want to be able to iterate stuff, make changes, adjust, and make something that people will care about. So don't be afraid to ask these questions. Go out and find for yourselves. Step number five, choose your channels. 
choose them wisely. Not just because of what I told you before. Don't open everywhere and, and hope that people will come just because you're everywhere. It's not going to happen. But the most important things to consider as next steps would be are you a B2B, B2B or business to business business or business to consumer? That will tell you straight away that half of the channels is irrelevant to you. If you're a business looking for customers online, forget about Facebook. It's really not going to cut it. You want to be on LinkedIn. You may want to be on YouTube if you have any videos. Or you may think about the fact that you don't have any videos, but they might work for the audience. <coughs> Therefore, you need to make videos. If you're a startup that's targeting 16-year-olds in the States, you want to be on Snapchat. If you're a startup with international ambitions and you want to trade globally, you need to consider the platforms that are relevant in different territories, because there are territories like China or Russia where Facebook is either non-existent, they banned it in China, or it is a secondary network, like in Russia where they have VK. So think about your audience, think about your geography and the kind of business you're in. <coughs> Very simple, start small. I've already told you that my experience tells me that people want to be everywhere, they want to be omnipresent, but no, that's not the way. Start small and build up gradually. Being on social media is more about like running a marathon rather than running a sprint, so you have to think about years to come. You may want to start with a couple of channels and focus on making them really good. Really, really good. It can be one channel, doesn't matter. Make it good. Make people notice you. How to make it good? <laughs> well, I guess if you knew, we wouldn't be here. And to be honest, I'm also finding out new things about how to make channels better than they are. It's fine, it's normal. But the basics are post regularly and post relevant content. Content that's relevant to your audience. And if you know your audience, you will know why would they care, because it's relevant. Then take very good care of your audience. People like to be taken care of. Listen to them. Take on their feedback. Interact with them. Be polite. Be nice. Trial and error. It sounds a bit scary because it has the word error, but you better get comfortable with it. It's normal. It's the same idea as the famous PDCA circle, which is more of a management framework. You, you probably can't see it, that's why I will literally write, read out what's on there. It's a very small, small circle. P is about plan. So plan in advance what is going to be on your channels. Because if you don't plan, you might start and be very passionate about what you do and post regularly, post relevant content five times a day or ten times a day. But in three weeks' time, you're going to run out of ideas. What are you going to do then? Your energy will go down, your excitement will go down, you'll abandon your channel most likely, or you will start posting as and when just because you don't know what to be talking to them about. Whereas when you plan, and at least plan for two or three months in, in advance, you know how the topics develop. From one topic, there can be 10 new topics that will come to your mind if you plan. Once you plan your stuff, you need to implement it. Just go and do it. When you have your plan, you know the topics, you know what coming in the calendar, so it's always good to utilize the dates, you know, like Christmas, New Year's, um, whatever, whatever is there, national holidays, Easter, you can basically make your con content relevant even in addition to other steps you're taking to make it relevant just by using the dates. Also, there is an alternative calendar these days, it's like a you know, social media calendar, like on Twitter, these hashtags are really popular. For example, hashtag motivational Monday, or hashtag Thursday thoughts, or hashtag Friday feeling. These are things that marketers all over the world are using and getting traction because 
Everyone wants a bit of Friday feeling on a Friday afternoon, don't we? And when, when you implemented something, you want to check how it worked. Did it deliver on your objectives? Was it as good as you thought it would be? Did people enjoy it most interesting? Did you have enough likes? Did you have any shares? Did people say anything about what you said? If you're running paid campaigns, then there is a whole new framework um, that basically the social media channels gives you in order to assess the effectiveness of your campaign. But I will, I will talk about paid reach in a couple of minutes because it's a huge topic on its own. And once you checked, don't just settle for some analytics, some results. What you want to do is, is to actually make some conclusions and iterate the stuff moving forward. So how would you tweak this phrase? Was that Facebook post too long? <coughs> Did it lack pictures? Did it lack videos? Think about things that you need to introduce in order to improve on that. And as I said, organic versus paid is a huge, huge topic. And I could be talking about it all day today and probably not cover half of that. But just to give you some really, really interesting nuggets, consider organic reach. And that's something that all social media channels have, at least in the beginning. They have good organic reach, which means you can reach new people, new audiences that are not your friends, that you don't know them, they don't know you, just because you're posting regularly and using hashtags or whatever it is, depending on the social media channel. So the general rule is that the older the platform, the less is the organic reach. So as I said before, for Facebook, it is now about 2%. Some actually believe it's one. I believe it's less than one these days. So basically, if you're a brand, on Facebook, you need to pay to get out of the silo. Otherwise, your page will have 20 followers. Most of them will be your friends. Or if you have many supportive friends, you might have 200 followers. Well, then you. But how are you going to improve on that? The only answer for some platforms these days is paid advertisement. And that's something you need to consider when actually launching your channels. You need to be realistic. And know that there will be very soon this level after which you can't really push the boundaries unless you invest in paid. On Twitter, it's slightly better. It's about 4%. This platform gives you about 4% of organic reach. And actually, even the paid advertisement is not as developed as on Facebook on this platform. Yeah, I, I have a question to that. Sure, you, you, you mean Twitter is good for organic? It is uh, better. Uh, growth. But uh, if you're a B2C uh, company and uh, your target group is probably the Generation Y, so it means 18 up to 30, do you think Twitter is a good channel to reach them? I, I think it depends on the market you're in, so it will vary from country to country. When I was doing my research in the UK, and the assumption was that this demographic is not on Twitter anymore, we were proved wrong. We actually went out and spoke to these people, like dozens of them, um, pretty much 18 to 25, that was our <coughs> bracket. And they said, oh yeah, of course we use Twitter, we use that for, for memes. And we were like, what are memes? And I had to explain to the founder of the startup I was working with what memes are, I literally had to animate and show, you know, meme is what you saw yesterday about uh, Trump will be tomorrow a meme on Twitter and people will be interacting with it. So to answer your question, it depends on the territory, but don't make assumptions just because you read an article on the internet saying, oh, the reach of Twitter among millennials is going down. No, just go and talk to the audience to double check before you make a decision, before you make an assumption. In my experience, Twitter is, is still very much in use, especially in Europe. In the States, however, it is in very stark competition with, say, Snapchat. And on the other side, proliferation on Snapchat in Europe is still marginal compared to the States. So there is no rule that applies to the entire world, basically. Of course not, but I uh, agree with the, you have to analyze really uh, carefully your target group. And especially if we look to the German market, I would say yeah. Twitter is, uh, for everyone uh, under 35, not common 
to I would say it's better to reach him via Instagram or Facebook and Twitter is more for uh, people with a higher age or company um, or VIPs which wants to make some messages to the world but not to to implement really a good campaign. Oh, we can check there. Can you raise your hand, please? Who uses Twitter here? Yeah. Twitter? Yeah, then you need to okay. check the age of these people. Passport is anyone? Not the ones in my So, yeah, it depends on the channel, it depends on your demographic. But uh, don't make assumptions too early. That's probably the only word of advice that I would, I would, I would give on that. Um, and also check your budget. You need to know what you can afford to spend in order to push your stuff effectively through the paid um, advertisement before you decide to. That's that's the way forward. That's the way forward, for example, to advertise on Twitter or wherever. As, as I said, the general rule is: the more established the platform is, the less is the organic reach. So if you take Instagram, for example, that is newer than Facebook, even though it's owned by Facebook these days, your engagement levels are about 20% on organic reach. So organic reach is 20% compared to 2% on Facebook. That's something that you can see very, very easily when you're a brand trying to advertise. And step number nine, what KPIs matter? What key performance, performance indicators really matter to you? At, I already touched upon it a bit earlier. So there is vanity metrics and there is real stuff. So forget about vanity metrics. You're not competing with your friends on how many people like your baby picture. It doesn't matter. Think about what actually matters is achieving reach first, and whether you do it organically or you pay for it, you need to get there. Because unless you have reach, you can't engage with these people. So imagine I'm here, you are, I don't know, in Berlin, and you have a fantastic product, and I'm someone who is looking for the product like that. I don't know, it can be, it can be something to do with, um, okay, let's take soups. Again, I was really impressed by that soup over there. <laughs> That's why all my examples are focused on soups. But basically, yes, I, I love soups, but I'm in Munich and you're a brand in Berlin. Unless you reach me somehow, I'm not gonna find out about you. No one will tell me. I, I won't know. So how can I engage with your brand or make a buying decision if I never heard of you? Second step is engagement. And generally all engagement is good, unless you get too many angry faces or negative comments. But if you handle them correctly, you can turn around the situation. There were, there were many, many cases on the internet where a brand was getting into trouble and the reaction of a smart social media manager actually saved the situation, saved the day. So don't be too discouraged by negative comments. Just be real, be authentic, and address them. Don't hide from them. Hiding is, is, is bad. Mm. Um, and the other thing is the authentic following. When I said likes is not as important, it's not important unless it comes from people who are genuinely interested in you. So don't buy likes. Don't try to bribe people to get likes. Try to make sure that people like you for what you are, for what you do as a company. So choose always quality over quantity. And I have a small example here. Um, this is, again, it's a shame you can't see the picture because these pictures are from Facebook page of a business that my friend has in Portugal. He has this surf camp and I, help him, I was helping him out few years ago, even before I started doing it commercially, and I just love what Guy does. He has this lovely surf center, which is called Figueira Surf Center, so if anyone is into surfing, check them out, they're great. And they really do their work properly, so they have certified instructors, they have nice accommodation, the people who come there always give them five stars for service, and that's actually reflected on the, on the Facebook page, you can't fake that. So you, you're not going to get a five-star review unless everyone is giving you five stars. That's why for new brands, I actually advise not to have review button because you can have a few mistakes in the beginning and it will be reflected there forever. If you don't want that, unless you're very, very confident, don't, don't put this button on there. So this, this lovely 
South Sensor was a bit struggling because the main channel for attracting new customers was Google AdWords a few years ago. And Google has changed its algorithm to favor the websites that were mobile optimized. So if your website is nice and simple on the mobile, you would get higher ranking in Google and your ad AdWords on Google will work very nicely, push your website up the chain. However, Philippe's website wasn't mobile optimized at this stage. And therefore, he just plummeted down in rankings. He wasn't getting any customers, any leads. The business just went flat for about a season. He was complaining to me about that and I said, look, you have this lovely Facebook page and you have quite a good following there. At the time, there was about, I don't know, seven, eight hundred people. They're already not bad for a small business. And I said, yeah, but you know, I do post stuff every now and then and people who come to, to the camp, they do like the page and they also like the pictures, but what is it if the surfing season is six months? For the other six months, I, I leave the country, I go and work somewhere else and there is nothing happening. So okay, but your season is launching in about, what, month time, two months time? Let's start the countdown. Let's remind these people that you already have as friends on your page that are all authentic and loyal followers. Let's remind them that you're launching in a couple of months. I do want to be reminded when it's winter and it's cold that in a couple of months I can be surfing somewhere in sunny Portugal. It's, it's great. And I will plan in advance. I will plan my visit. I will plan the dates. I will get in touch and book. So we started this countdown and it really worked. So people started engaging early. Normally when it was a completely dead season and, and surfing wasn't top of the mind for the majority of people, we started getting some responses and actually the booking started filling up. And it continued into the season. So when the season came, obviously there were many, many updates of lovely surfing sessions, nice pictures of sunset, food, whatever, into the, it put, in, put into the timeline. And some of the posts were promoted. So we went for a targeted promotion in several countries around Europe where majority of customers were coming historically from. It was the UK, Germany, the Netherlands, and a few other, sorry, a few other countries. And we targeted them well. And actually, this season ended up being one of the best seasons that Philippe had. For the next year, we repeated the same tactic and it has become the best season ever. It was so good, they were so filled up that actually for the first time ever, he didn't have to go somewhere else to work in the winter. So his work during the season provided them enough income so he could just, just chill between the seasons and prepare for the next one. Which is really handy. And obviously the following, the following has grown as well. So from May, we went to 1,300 people, and it's not huge, it's not you know, a following of a big brand, but it works. It delivers exactly what it has to deliver. It delivers customer bookings that fill up the entire season. What else you can ask for? Amazing. Step 10, the most important one. Go play. Go play and do what you want to do, what you need to do. And what I want you to do right now is to note down, hopefully most of you have pens or laptops or iPads or something, note down five steps, hopefully there will be five, not less than that, what you're going to change about your social media presence, if you have one, for your business. I'm not touching upon your personal social media presence, although you can adjust your presence to according to my recommendations, of course, but Think about your business presence and note what you think you will do and make yourself accountable. If you had some good nuggets, don't just walk out of the room and forget about them because you had a couple of drinks afterwards, danced your night away and, and completely forgot. Just put them down on paper now. And once you do that, if you don't have any social media presence for your business, think what you may want to do if you decide to have it. And hopefully you now are converted and you will decide to have one. So take a couple of minutes, do that, and we'll discuss what you put down. If you go, two minutes. May I ask you one different question? Because you mentioned the personal um, Facebook thing. Um, 
I'm always wondering how to combine the business people I know there and the private people because it's all mixed up. And I know some people have two Facebook accounts which doesn't really work in general as well. But how is it like how do you how do you recommend to put on your if you don't mind, I will address the questions after because I really want people to concentrate yes. on writing, but I will address your question you. in the end. Okay, time's up. Who wants to go first with the five steps? Please, gentlemen. Yeah, we want everyone to hear. Uh, I only want to talk about one step. Um, do you know something about the Google standard AMP? Accelerated mobile pages? Yeah. That's the question. That's not your takeaway. I will come back to questions after this exercise if you don't mind. Sorry, I just want to hear the key takeaways from people. I want people to be to have actionable steps and to be accountable. Anyone ready with five actionable steps? Come on, don't be shy. It can be less than five. It's alright. I know you guys were writing something. Yeah, I've got something. Um, sure, okay, um, it's not in order, but anyways. Uh, first of all, uh, post uh, relevant content to the audience, which seems obviously um, obvious, but I think asking that question every time is important. Then, um, well, pay where, where, where necessary. I, I didn't know that the, the, um, the rate was at one or two percent at Facebook. That's very surprising. Then, um, I mean, of course, we had this uh, model of uh, plan, do, check, and act. And I think, uh, of course, you always check and you always draw your conclusions, but I think it's important to do that. Like, I, I'm just seeing that, that, that uh, doing that would be even more uh, helping. And check the enemies <laughs> is something that I think, I mean, do, doing that more frequently and um, comparing. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we'll be calling you in a few days' time to check if you've done that. Yeah, please. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah, we have takers over there. Thanks, Yana. Happy. I just thought was also adding um, to react spontaneously, so to trust yourself and trust <coughs> when you have a feeling you, th you think you could act. And then you sometimes think, oh no, I shouldn't do that. Maybe that's not appropriate. Um, to tr trust your own instincts. And, trust your gut. Yeah. yeah. And just go for it. And then I think it also the, the presentation then becomes more exciting for people to see and to follow, maybe. Absolutely. So how it will manifest for, you, for yourself, how you will be acting um, more? Yeah, just trust myself more. I, I have so often I think, oh, I should do this and react to that. And then I just go, oh, no. Right, I just don't do it and then... Okay, I'm not a life coach, but it's, 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 it's a missed opportunity because you, yeah. everybody, like, there's something comes in the media and you think, okay, I've got the ideal picture for that, yeah. to react and to, to make a comment. And then I just go, oh, no, I'm not going to do it. Absolutely, so, go and try. Yeah. Go and try and see what happens. 
Yeah. So maybe the next uh, most uh, valuable brand in Germany in a few years' time, if you do that well. Anyone else? Yeah? Yeah, thank you for the entire presentation first. I think it was really, really um, useful. I really like your step 10. This is for me the, the go play one that I that inspires me the most. I think the social media gives us a really great opportunity to be creative and to create perspectives around content, content angles, other personality angle of the brand uh, that uh, that we want to show to the world so I think it's uh, it's quite interesting to think about it how can I build some stories how can I present my brand in different ways and I think that's on my side what I still have to work on storytelling and personality those are two great takeaways very happy for you thank you Okay, we're going to run another exercise um, at the moment, because uh, I've been talking way too much today. And my lovely assistants will distribute some cards to write on for you, because what we're going to attempt right now is social media in action, but offline. 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 <laughs> Try that. If you can do that, you can do anything else. So the idea is for me to try and connect you as a group bit more because you go away and you know memories fade and you not necessarily connected um, or you don't necessarily know who you sitting next to it might be your next big opportunity so what I want you to do to write on one page you need two pages on one page you write what are your gifts so what is it that you have and you can bring to the outside world that someone else might need Obviously business related, it's not a dating website, but um, I will give you an example. In my case, my gifts are social media guru, business growth machine, and your right hand marketing person. So think about the same for you, put it down on one page, and on another page, put your wants. Wants is not really an English word, but I made it up. Uh, what it means is what you want to find. You might want to find an investor, so put there people with money, or you might find want to find a co-founder, you might want to find, I don't know, marketing specialist, whoever, it doesn't matter. Put there the, the things that you want to find in that person. So for yeah. myself, for example, it's a smart and resourceful intern that I always needs for these people, passionate about digital and marketing and proactive and positive. So what is it for you? What kind of people are you looking for who will help you to propel your business to success? Write them down and you will have three minutes to do that. Three minutes should be fine. Don't forget to put your name and email on that because we're not going to scrap them. We're going to put them on the wall, once on one side, gifts on another side, so everyone can go and check them out, take pictures, and actually liaise with each other. So as a result of the success, you will hopefully work out with some good contacts in your notebook. <laughs> Brauchst du noch einen Tipp? Ja, ja, oder hast du das schon bestimmt? Ja, ja. Okay. Ich schweige jetzt auch nicht hin. Okay. Ich muss mal gucken, dass ich hier irgendwie noch
doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be three bullet points. It can be one. Depends on how many gifts or ones you have, I guess. Okay, time is up. So now what I want to do, I want all of you to start talking to each other. So if you're from the same group, that doesn't count. You have to talk to someone you don't know. And if you're left alone, just come and talk to me. But basically, if you are sitting here, then talk to the person on your left. And if you're sitting there, talk to the person on the right. Talk to someone you don't know. And tell them, tell them what are your gifts, what are your wants. Engage with people.
by all means, but if someone hasn't seen or heard about your gifts and needs, at the moment we are collecting all the cards and we are placing them over there on the window. So you can do it yourself if you go and put on the left hand side, we are putting our wants and on the right hand side we are putting our gifts. If we can all do that and not confuse them, that would be awesome because I can't read German and I can't correct anyone. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Thank you, there are some people who started doing that, wonderful. So, if we all do that, it'll be great, and I will be answering questions on the side because I think we ran out of time like six minutes, 45 oh, seconds ago. I have two questions. Thank you so much, let's give her a warm applause, thank you.